Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be discussing the latest dev workshop, which has three topics. Arsenal Divide, Parazon Rework, and the Helmet Expansion. Today we're going to keep to the Arsenal Divide, which refers to the MIDI weapon changes and the range weapon changes. First of all, these are the table of contents, and of course, all the relevant links will be left in the description down below for your ease of use. MIDI mod nerfs, weapon changes, primary and secondary weapon arcanes, galvanize mods, and login items. I'm gonna blast through the less important things and if you can hear my neighbor drilling, please excuse me. Let's begin with the melee mod nerfs because this was the biggest point of concern for the community. You got five categories, Berserker, Blood Rush, Condi Condition Overload, Glaze, which are slightly less important, and the Kuvar Nukor, this was the most powerful secondary weapon and the best primer for Condition Overload. So let's start off with Berserker. The current form is like this, 30% attack speed, maxing out at 75 for 24 seconds on a critical hit. Berserker becomes Berserker Fury, so we can no longer stack with Fury or Prime Fury. On melee kill, instead of on a critical hit, 35% attack speed up from 30, but unfortunately only 2 stacks. So you're gonna get a max of 70 instead of 75 for 10 seconds. The duration is not an issue, the 5% less is not an issue, from my point of view what's an issue here is the fact that it's on kill. For low level content, level 100, 200, whatever, it doesn't really matter all that much, but when you're dealing with level 3000, 4000, 5000 enemies and so on and so forth, this on kill thing will become an issue. Next we got Blood Rush. Blood Rush used to be 60% critical chance stacks with combo multi, now it's down to 40% critical chance stacks with combo multi. Apparently they don't like the whole crit meta melee thing so they're nerfing it down. And finally Condition Overload, perhaps the most powerful of uh, melee mods in the current meta. The current form, 120% melee damage uh, per status type affecting the target, it's gonna go down to 80% melee damage per status type affecting the target, but that's not all. This wouldn't be so bad, but they're reverting it to the way it used to be. Free status types maximum, that's it, so you're gonna get 240%, and this is done so Prime Pressure Point can actually compete with Condition Overload, but this also means you can get to those crazy high numbers that Condition Overload used to get to, so do bear that one in mind. We're gonna skip the glaives, basically they're increasing the charge time from 0.6 to 1.2. This won't make a huge deal of difference, but the Kuva new core changes do. Change targets, reduce... Ouch, this hurts. <laughs> this definitely hurts. Now my friends, this is the bulk of the information. If you wanna go into detail again, there are links in the description down below. We can't be 100% sure of how this will affect the end game meta, but from a mathematical perspective, you're still gonna be able to blast through Steel Path using only melee like a hot knife through butter. No, it's not as powerful, but melee is still king of the hill. So do bear that one in mind. So let's move on to range weapon changes. First of all, we're gonna be getting six arcanes, free for primaries and free for secondary weapons. Now, they're basically the same, so yeah. They made them different for primaries and secondaries for future balancing, I'm assuming, but again, they do the exact same thing. Merciless, on kill, 30% damage for 6 seconds, stacks 12 times, amazing, plus 30 reload speed and plus 100 ammo max. Deadhead, on headshot kill, 120% damage, 24 seconds, stacks up 3 times, 30% headshot multi, minus 50% weapon recoil and dexterity is a forced and I do emphasize forced melee synergy on melee kill, 60% damage for 20 seconds, stacks up 6 times. Well, <laughs> these are all well and good, but the problem with these are the fact that they're on kill. On kill, my friends, they're on kill. It's the same argument we were talking about earlier with um, Blood Rush, with the brand new version of Blood Rush. If you're trying to buff range weapons so they actually can compete with melee on the steel path, then you can't really put it on kill because when you're gonna reach really high level content, then it's not really gonna matter all that much. But let's talk about galvanized mods and these are all the galvanized mods. Let me make this thing better, bigger so you have a better view. As you can see, these are modified versions of already existing mods, buffed versions if you will. Galvanized Scope is Argon Scope, Galvanized Aptitude is Rifle Aptitude, Galvanized Savvy is Shotgun Savvy and so on and so forth. Which strikes me as being a bit odd, simply because you could have modified the existing items, not introduced new items. These also have a higher drain, 14. 
For example, the normal version of Argon Scope has a drain of 7. <laughs> also, these will be hidden behind Steel Path, which again is a bit on the weird side considering that the whole dev workshop started with We understand that you're forced into melee when going into Steel Path, yet the power-ups for ranged weapons are behind Tension and Steel Essence, which again strikes me a bit odd. But let's get over that for a second, shall we? Galvanize Scope. Let's take a comparison directly to Argon Scope. On headshot, 120% critical chance when aiming for 12 seconds. The regular version of Argon Scope gives you 135%, but only for 9 seconds. And here comes the second part of the mod, the galvanized bit. On headshot kill, 40% critical chance when aiming for 12 seconds, stacking up 5 times. That is amazing, my friends, isn't it? But is it really? Because it's gonna be amazing when you're dealing with what I like to call normal level content. Let's say level 100, let's say 200, let's say 300 level content, which most players, let's be honest, are never gonna see level 300 enemies. There is no real reason for it, but when it comes to actual high level play, the whole steel path bit for survivals, for example, or defenses when you meet level 3000, 4000, 5000 enemies, this whole on kill bit is gonna become a problem. You're not really gonna get that much of a power up from them. Which was basically my problem with what they did with Blood Rush as well. There are still a couple of things which carry weight and I do wanna point out. First off, ranged weapons will not have their arcane slot unlocked by default. Instead, you gotta buy these arcane unlockers. Yes, my friends, one more trinket you need to buy to unlock a slot on a weapon. Because the Exilus slot wasn't bad enough. This is not a platinum item, okay, so you cannot buy it with platinum, instead you gotta get 15 steel essence for each and every single one from Teshin Steel Path Honors, which again strikes me as odd considering this patch was supposed to be about buffing range weapons. The new arcanes will be dropping from Steel Path, Acolytes 100% chance to drop one of the new 6 arcanes, and yes of course, kit guns will be able to have 2 arcane slots, one the special kit gun arcane and one the brand new ranged arcane. And one last thing, this one I really don't get. What they're gonna be doing is adding a despawn timer to Steel Essence. Yeah, a despawn timer, a 5 minute despawn timer to Steel Essence. Honestly, I don't get why that is. Obviously, the developer doesn't want us to farm Steel Essence this fast, because a known tactic was to let Steel Essence drop, pile up, get your Smita buff, and then get the Steel Essence, so you get a bit more. Unfortunately, that will it won't become impossible, it just will become a whole lot more difficult. You gotta run timers for every time a steel essence has dropped and which one was which and so on and so forth. Honestly, I don't get this change. Out of all the changes in this workshop, this makes the least amount of sense to me and I hope they're not gonna implement it into the game. Let's draw some preliminary conclusion. It's very hard for me to form an opinion based on what? Based on some text based on a video. I need some actual gameplay experience with the changes to see how things will go. To me it looks like they missed the mark on almost everything that was important and even though that might sound like a harsh criticism, let's break it down for a second. Let's take melee. Melee is king of the hill and that's fine, the developer is okay with melee being king of the hill, that's fine. But if that's the case, why would you nerf Blood Rush and Condition Overload? They nerf Blood Rush because they don't like the crit meta and they nerf Condition Overload because they want prime pressure point to actually be an option? That's weird. The Berserker nerf I get because again you could reach really high attack speeds and that would break animation and cause all sorts of problems, that's fine, but why nerf Blood Rush and Condition Overload? To me that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Nerfing the Kuvanu core, honestly I'm surprised it got to this point. The Kuvanu core was the, and still is for the time being, the most powerful secondary weapon in Warframe. There's just no buts about it, so a nerf is understandable there. As for ranged weapons, it feels like a dog chasing its own tail, honestly, because while the buffs are significant, it doesn't fix the scaling issue that range has. And also, you're hiding these buffs behind kills. Everything is behind kill, which from my point of view will not really help range weapons when it comes to super high level play, which was the problem to begin with. And that's pretty much it for my two cents. Again, these are preliminary uh, discussions regarding the brand new changes that are upcoming to Warframe. Perhaps the developer will make some changes. Perhaps there's something we're not seeing. But in any case, I'm really interested in knowing what do you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below. And by all intents and purposes, don't be silent. Let the developer know what do you think of these. Go onto their forums, post, onto their videos. I would also like to point out the fact that there has been a very, very aggressive a reaction to the developer's video outlining all these changes. My friends, 
as I pointed out in the past and have demonstrated, clear, concise, rational, reasonable and respectable feedback will get you a whole lot more further than insulting people and being angry at what is essentially, my friends, changes to a free online video game. And that's just my two cents on the matter. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.